students our next topic is pollen pistil interaction students we have studied how a male gametophyte that is pollen grain is formed we have also studied how a female gametophyte that is embryo sac is formed right once pollen grain is formed which possesses male gametes embryo sac is formed which possesses female gamete then there should be transfer of the pollen grain from the anther of one flower to the stigma of another flower either of the same plant or of the different plant we have studied that also that process is called as pollination right so once pollination is done once the pollen reaches to the stigma right then what happens what are the next processes that happens right so what happens next is called as pollen pistil interaction right so there are series of events which are happening in pollen pistil interaction what are the events which are happening right so first of all we will draw a pistil and a pollen grain we will enlarge it so that we can understand it in a better way this is the pistil part right and here comes the pollen grains it is is the pollen grain right this is stigma this is style and this is the pollen grain so first the first step is identification of a compatible pollen grain by <coughs> pistil that is the first step identification of a compatible pollen grain by a pistil right so what is compatible right if pollen grain is of right type then that is called as compatible and if pollen grain is of wrong type then such pollen grain is called as incompatible pollen grain right so pollen grain is of right type it is compatible wrong type it is incompatible but what does that mean that pollen grain is of right type or of the wrong type so right it depends how the pistil so that is the step right there is identification pistil is going to identify whether the pollen grain is a compatible pollen grain that is of the right type how can we decide that the pollen grain is of right type right which means that the pollen grain should be of the same species right say any of the factor is helping in pollination there are different agencies which are helping in pollination wind water or any animals or any birds or insects they can bring the pollen grain of the plant of the same species or of the different species so there are chances that there might be the pollen grain of different species also so say this pollen grain is of wrong type and this pollen grain is of right type so how can we decide right so that is this is a pollen grain of different species right and this is the pollen grain of same species right so if the pollen grain is of same species then only it is considered as compatible one more point is to be mentioned that is about self incompatibility if this pistil is self incompatible which means that it is not going to accept the pollen grain which comes from the same flower or of the same plant it is going to accept the pollen grain of different plant of the same species only then also the pollen grain is considered as an incompatible pollen grain right so there is identification whether the pollen grain is compatible which means whether the pollen grain is of the same species it it is not favoring self pollination right or whether the pollen grain is of 
wrong type that is incompatible how this identification is done this identification is done by the series of dialogues between Poland and Pistil. Series of dialogues, exchange of dialogue occurs between the Poland and Pistil. And what is the series of dialogues? So there is chemical interaction between Poland and Pistil to identify whether Pistil is compatible or not. Right? So there is a series of dialogues which happens between Pistil and Pollen Grain by chemical interaction to identify the genetic constituency of the Pistil as well as Pollen Grain so as to identify whether the Pollen Grain is a compatible Pollen Grain or an incompatible Pollen Grain. So that is the first step in Pollen Pistil interaction. That is identification of a compatible Pollen Grain by the Pistil. Right? Once, once a compatible pollen grain has been identified by the pistil. So this is an incompatible pollen grain we are removing. Right? So what happens next? Which is the next step? There is release of secretions by pistil. Secretions in terms of water and sugar is released by the pistil. So now what happens? There is release of some secretions by the pistil. Right? The secretions consist of water and sugar. This is released by pistil. Right? And this release of secretions by the pistil that is water and sugar is absorbed by the pollen grain that is water and sugar is absorbed by the pollen grain right so first there is identification of the correct compatible pollen grain how a pollen grain is compatible it should the pollen grain should be of the same species Right? There are chances that pollen grains of some other species of some other plants will also come. So identification is necessary. If the plant is self incompatible, then even if the pollen grain is of the same plant, then also it is not allowed to germinate. Right? Then the second point is release of the secretions by the pistil. What kind of secretions are released by the pistil? That is water and sugar. And these secretions are absorbed by the pollen grain, right? Then the third step is germination of pollen grain, right? So now what will happen once water and sugar is absorbed? There is germination of pollen grain, right? So once it is absorbed, the pollen grain is going to germinate. We know the structure of pollen grain. It is surrounded by exine. But there are places where exine is not present. That part is called as germ pore. And from that germ pore, a pollen tube is going to emerge. That emerging of pollen tube is called as germination of pollen grain. So say from here, the pollen tube is emerging, right? So what is germination of pollen grain? That is emergence, emerging of pollen tube from the germ pore. Now what did the pollen grain possess? It possessed one large cell. That cell is called as vegetative cell. And it possesses one small spindle shaped cell that is called as generative cell. This was the structure of a pollen grain which is shedded in a two cell stage. 
and we know in 60 percentage of angiospermic plants pollen grains are shedded in a two cell stage one vegetative cell and one generative cell the function of vegetative cell was the formation of pollen tube so this pollen tube arises from vegetative cell what will the generative cell do this generative cell undergoes one mitotic division right so from a single generative cell two cells will be formed and these two cells which are formed are called as male gametes right so what will happen the generative cell which was present inside the pollen grain underwent one mitotic division to produce two male gametes so this two male gametes will be present at the tip of the pollen tube right so there is germination of pollen grain emergence of the pollen tube from the germ pore then the pollen grain at two cell stage right pollen grain is at two cell stage right the generative cell undergoes one mitotic division to produce two male gametes which are present at the tip of pollen tube clear right so this pollen tube right so it will uh, draw the entire structure right then this is the ovary right so now this pollen tube is going to elongate and it is going to enter and it is going to cross the entire portion of this type what is present inside the ovary within ovary is the presence of the ovule ovule possesses an embryo sac and within embryo sac what is the structure this is chalazal and this is micropyle and right there are three cells present towards the micropyle and one egg cell and the other two synergid cells so these are the synergid cells in the center there are two polar nuclei and towards the chalazal and there are three antipodal cells right so with the emergence with the elongation of pollen tube this male gametes are always present at the tip of the pollen tube right we will keep it elongating so this pollen tube will elongate and it will enter into the embryo sac through the synergid cell right so this are the male gametes this are male gametes right so that is the fourth step that is growth of pollen tube right pollen tube keeps on growing right pollen tube keeps on growing with presence of two male gametes at its tip it finally enters the ovule that is embryo sac through micropyle and which end this is the most common type right that is micropyle and right and so this pollen tube there is growth of pollen tube and it is entering into the embryo sac 
through the microfile end. This is embryo sac. This is microfile end. That is chalice will end. So it is entering through the microfile end. Who is guiding the entry of pollen tube? This is very important. Right? Synergid cells. Guide the entry of pollen tube, right? So, synergid cells are going to guide the entry of pollen tube, right? This entire process, right? This entire process of identification. germination of pollen grain growth of pollen tube and entry of pollen tube through microfile and is called as this entire process is called as pollen pistil interaction so identification is done by the series of dialogues which happens between pollen and pistil to find out whether the pollen grain is compatible or not then there is release of water and sugar from the pistil which is absorbed by the pollen grain. Then there is germination of pollen grain, emergence of the pollen tube. In most of the angiospermic plants, the pollen grain is in a two-celled stage. One vegetative and one generative cell. Vegetative cell is involved in the formation of pollen tube. Generative cell will undergo one mitotic division to produce two male gametes which are present at the tip of the pollen grain. If the pollen grain is already released in a three cell stage then already male gametes will be present in the pollen tube. Then there is growth of the pollen tube with the male gametes at the tip. This pollen tube is going to enter into the embryo sac through the microfile end. This entry of pollen tube is guided by the synergic cells. Synergic cells guide the entry of pollen tube. This entire process is called as pollen pistil interaction. Now, we are going to study about the process of fertilization. Okay. <coughs> Students, we have studied about pollen pistil interaction. What is pollen pistil interaction? Pollen pistil interaction is the series of the events which occurs beginning from the deposition of the pollen grain on the stigma, germination of the pollen grain by the formation of pollen tube, growth of the pollen tube and entry of the pollen tube into the ovule. Right? So how does the entry of the pollen tube occurs into the embryo sac? Right? So this is pollen tube, this is embryo sac, right? This is the micropyle end of the embryo sac, this is the chalicyl end of the embryo sac. The pollen tube possesses two male gametes. Two male gametes are present at the tip of the pollen tube. Normally, the most common path of entry of the pollen tube is through the micropyle end. Which cells are present at the micropyle end? There is one egg cell that is female gamete and two synergid cells. All the cells are haploid cells, right? This two synergid cells possesses finger-like projections. So, these are the finger-like projections which are present in the synergid cells. 
those projections are called as filiform apparatus right so what happens what are the events that happens right when there is entry of the pollen tube in the embryo sac who is guiding it so we have studied that synergid cells are guiding the entry of pollen tube precisely the filiform apparatus of synergid cells guide the entry of pollen tube right so the filiform apparatus of the synergid cells guides the entry of the pollen tube of any one of the synergid cell now what happens right the cell in which the pollen tube is entering that synergid cell starts this integrating right so in short the male gametes are released in the cytoplasm of synergid cells right which is gradually degenerating so thereby male gametes are released in the cytoplasm of central large cell right so what happens right this synergic cell right in which the pollen tube has entered this synergic cell gradually starts degenerating right so what happens ultimately this two male gametes will be released will be finally present in the cytoplasm of this central cell right so this are the main gametes which are present in the cytoplasm of the central cell this is clear right now we studied that the most common mode of entry of the pollen tube into the embryo sac is through the micropylon it can also enter through the chalicel and or also through the integuments there are different names given to it right say i am rubbing erasing it modes of entry of pollen tube right this is the stigma this is the style this is the ovary ovary as is this ovule this end is micropyle end this end is chalicel end right so say this is the pollen grain so this is the germination of pollen tube if this pollen tube enters into the embryo sac through the micropyle end then that is called as porogam right that is called as porogam right again i am drawing one more diagram right this 
is the this is the micro pylon this is the chalazal end right if this pollen tube is entering into the ovule directly through the chalazal end then that is called as chalazo gamete right and the third type is if this pollen tube is entering into the ovule through the integument right so integuments are the part of the ovule these are the integuments again this is the micropyle end this is the chalazal end if the pollen tube is entering through integuments right then that is called as meso gamete so these are the three different modes of entry of pollen tube entry of the pollen tube through the micropyle end of the ovule is called as porogamy entry of the pollen tube through the chalazal end is called as chalazogamy and entry of the pollen tube through the integuments is called as mesogamy pollen tube next topic is fertilization so what we have studied till day we have studied pollen pistil interaction entry of the pollen tube into the embryo sac release of the male gametes in the cytoplasm of the central cell right now happens the process of fertilization right so what happens first the first process of fertilization is syngamy and the second process is triple fusion and the syngamy and triple fusion together is called as double fertilization it was proposed by navashkin in fritillaria and Lilium plant. Right? These are the two events of fertilization. First is syngamy, second is triple fusion. Together they are called as double fertilization. It was proposed by Navashkin in Fritillaria and Lilium plant. What are these two events? Right? So, first we will draw a diagram showing entry of the male gametes, right? Which we had drawn, right? So, very quickly see it, right? So, this is the stigma style ovary. This is the ovule present within the ovary and within the ovule is the embryo sac. Pollen grain of the right type is identified of a compatible type is identified by the stigma there is germination of the pollen grain and growth of pollen tube the common mode of entry of pollen tube into the ovule is through the micropyle end right within ovule are present the embryo sac and this embryo sac possesses the cells synergid cells and egg cell which is a female gamete so this is the entry of the pollen tube and there is release of the two male gametes 
the two male gametes are released right now will enlarge the structure of the embryo sac this is the chalazal end this is the micropyle end these are the three antipodal cells these are the two polar nuclei in the center there is the egg cell right and those are surrounded by the synergic cells and the synergic cells possesses filiform apparatus so this cells are synergic cells this is the egg cell right entry of the pollen tube is guided by the filiform apparatus right and the male gametes will first enter into the cytoplasm of any one of the synergic cell which gradually degenerates so the male gametes enters into the cytoplasm of this central cell right so the cell is degenerating so finally the male gametes have entered into the cytoplasm this are the male gametes right one male gamete one male gamete is going to fuse with the female gamete that is egg right that is female gamete right so one male gamete fuses with one female gamete to form a diploid zygote right this process is called as syngamy right so what is syngamy syngamy is the fusion of one male gamete so two male gametes are released out of this say this one male gamete fuses this male gamete fuses with the female gamete male gamete fusion with the egg cell that is female gamete that process is called as syngamy it will result in the formation of a diploid zygote this is the first event of double fertilization the second male gamete right so this one the second male gamete is going to fuse second male gamete right this is the second male gamete is going to fuse with the two polar nuclei right so this are the two polar nuclei right see this male gamete is also haploid female gamete is also haploid so the zygote which is formed is a diploid zygote in this case in case of triple fusion there is fusion of one haploid male gamete and two haploid polar cells right so what is formed what is formed is called as primary endosperm nucleus right and what will be the ploidy of this primary endosperm nucleus one male gamete right which is haploid and two polar nucleus again which are haploid so the ploidy of primary endosperm nucleus will be triploid right so this male gamete is going to fuse with this two polar nuclei to form a triploid primary endosperm nucleus right so these are the two events of fertilization fertilization was proposed by navashkin in fritillaria and lilium plants which are the two events the first event which should occur is syngamy the first event which should occur is not triple fusion right 
The first event which should occur is syngamy. It is fusion of one male gamete and one female gamete to form a diploid zygote. The second event which follows it is triple fusion. Why is it called as triple fusion? Because there is fusion of three nuclei, which are those one male nuclei and two polar nuclei. So a triploid primary endosperm nucleus is formed. Right? So these are the two events that is syngamy and triple fusion of double fertilization. Right? So I said that syngamy should occur first and then this event should occur second. Right? Why is it so? Right? So what is the zygote going to give rise to? The zygote is going to give rise to embryo and primary endosperm nucleus is going to further undergo mitotic division to form the endosperm. This endosperm provides nutrition to the developing embryo. Right? So this is a special feature in case of flowering plants. There is double fertilization. Two fertilization is occurring. One is syngamy, fusion of male and female gamete. And second is triple fusion. It is fusion of three nuclei. One male gamete and two polar nuclei. What if the zygote is not formed and primary endosperm nucleus is formed? Is that primary endosperm nucleus which is later going to give rise to endosperm of any use? If zygote is only not formed, if there is no syngamy, no. That is why I told you that first process should be zygote formation. And then once zygote is formed, then only primary endosperm nucleus is formed, right? Then afterwards, which development occurs first? Embryo development or the endosperm development, right? Then the answer is endosperm development. Right? So first syngamy, triple fusion. Then endosperm will be developed first from primary endosperm nucleus. Right? Once endosperm is properly developed, it is a mass of the cells which are going to provide nutrition. Then only embryo will develop so that it can continuously receive nutrition from the endosperm. Right? So if we we'll write the series of the events which are happening, then it would be as such, right? So first, there is syngamy. Then second step is triple fusion. Syngamy results in zygote formation. So first there will be zygote formation and then there will be primary endosperm nucleus formation. So first syngamy then triple fusion. This is followed by endosperm development. And once endosperm is ready to provide nutrition, then only there will be embryo development, right? Zygote forms embryo and primary endosperm nucleus is going to form endosperm. Endosperm provides nutrition to developing embryo. So this event is called as double fertilization, syngamy and triple fusion. It was proposed by Navashkin in 
Fritillaria and Lilium plant. Syngamy is the fusion of male and female gamete and triple fusion. Right? So triple fusion is the fusion of two of second male gamete and two polar nuclei. This is clear, right? So our next topic is how endosperm is developed and then how there is development of embryo.